This video is basically a tutorial on how I made this fire table out of cement and an existing table that I already had in my yard and how I built it into the fire table that you see here. I'm going to list all the things I actually used in making this table here and then I'm going to list all the things that I actually purchased to make the table as well. Always remember that I am a hobbyist and none of this should be taken as professional advice. I have no idea what I'm doing at any given time. So I wanted to buy a fire table, but they are outrageously expensive. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this metal table I have. I know it looks like wood, but it's definitely metal. I'm going to convert that into a fire table. Now I have no idea how I'm going to do it, but um, we're going to plug away at it and figure it out. All right, so here is the underside of the table. Now it is fully metal, but I don't want that burner or whatever I'm going to call it to be in contact with this because uh, I don't even, it's not aluminum or anything. So it's going to transfer the heat under here. And if someone grabs under here, it's going to burn them. So I'm going to make sure that there is space um, on the upper level to have space in between that and the actual unit. And here are how the legs kind of connect onto this thing. So I am thinking, let's surround this whole thing in cement and let's see how that goes. So the first thing we're going to do, let's build a form. All right, so I picked up this really cheap board from Home Depot, and yeah, it's really thin. I'm planning on putting it on a flat surface, but I really like the fact that it has a really good sheen. This is actually whiteboard. It's got a chalkboard on the other side. So if I wanted a little bit of texture, I could use this side, but I'm thinking I really don't want any texture on my cement. So I am going to use this side as the base of a mold I'm going to make to pour my cement into. Now I just need to cut it down to size. Now, this one is for noobs. If you've never cut anything down on a board before, I mean on a table saw, um, you you kind of understand that maybe sometimes you're cutting things short and nothing seems to match up exactly when you where you need it to match up. But the problem usually lies in the fact that you're measuring to where you want it to be. You make a line here on your board and then you just go ahead and cut it. But you have to consider that this blade is part of the thickness. So whenever you make a line on a board and you want to cut exactly to that spot, if you're keeping like, let's say this side of the board, you want to have your line on this side of the actual blade. So that part will all be cut off and this part you will save. So if you're cutting it right in the middle, you're cutting off just a little bit, maybe it's a 16th of an inch, maybe it's an eighth of an inch that you're short all the time. And that's probably why. All right, I've got the bottom of my form cut out to size. I'm actually making it a 23 inch by 43 inch, I think. Let me measure that again. Yeah, 43 inch. And I've done that so that it, it goes beyond a little bit of this table here. So I want to be able to pour the cement and have this table sort of have a lip underneath where some part of the table has about an inch of concrete coming out underneath it, kind of like a, a beveled out edge that it, this could sit into so that it sits securely on here and someone doesn't like move the table and then the top shifts off or something like that. So now what I've done is I've measured the middle point on this side, middle point on that side, and these sides so that I can make a perfect mark in the middle. And then I've made that same mark here and then I'm gonna go around and I'm just gonna mark where this is at um, all the way around on this board. Now it's hard to see in the video, but I have a faint line drawn all the way around. That's basically where the inset of the uh, fire pit pan is gonna go. That's a lot of P's in one word, um, but we don't wanna have a hole there. Now understand that we're basically building this upside down. So this, this here is going to be the top here. So that when this is done and set, we're gonna flip it upside down. But if I make a hole this big, the whole entire pan that I have is going to fall through. Now it has a lip of about an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to go all the way around and I'm actually going to make this hole a little bit smaller by those dimensions. All right, now I've measured in an inch and an eighth around all those edges. Now it's about an inch and a quarter to the pan, so that'll give me a tiny bit of wiggle room to be able to drop the pan in, have it plenty of support on the concrete, and I think I actually got cement, um, and then have it actually sit into the table. Now how I'm going to make a form to make it sit into the table is now we are going to go ahead and build wood structure in here, in this section, and put it actually on the board itself. Okay, so now I'm just going to build a form. So I need a form on the inside here. I'm gonna go on the inside angle here. So that cement is gonna be poured all the way up into this point. I'm not even showing you on camera where I'm pointing. Sorry, my bad. So here, I wouldn't wanna put the, the form here 
because this is where we want cement. We want the actual pan to sit on cement in this location. And when we're done pouring, we're actually going to remove these sticks out of the way. So we're going to go ahead and make a form on these corners, on the inside of the corner. So let's say this is not the piece I'm going to use, but let's say if I had another piece, I'm going to put that one there and then all the way down. And we're going to make it as thick and deep as we want it to be so that no cement is going to be poured into that area, giving me a gap of air for that pan to kind of dissipate the heat. So it's not actually going straight into the table at all times. And then we also are gonna need to figure out how to make a hole in the center because this thing is going to need to come out the bottom of our table. All right, now measuring it out, this is two inches deep. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to make that cavity two and a half inches deep. And then the rest of it, however deep I'm gonna make this will be filled with cement. So we're gonna make a cavity that's gonna go depth two and a half inches and then whatever width and length we've already kind of filled out okay after scrummaging in my garage i think i found a good board to use this is an old door uh not frame an old door casing i think um that i use for a door it's just an, a leftover piece so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this down to two and a half we don't want it higher than that because i don't want a hole in the table but i want to be able to have an inset spot for this um this pan so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and cut this down we have done that is on my table i have my bar here i've measured with my measuring tape to exactly two and a half you see i want to be on the inside of my tooth there because this is the part i'm going to keep so i don't want to measure to the middle of my blade i don't want to measure to the outside of my blade i want to measure directly from my bar all the way exactly to the the tooth of my blade all right i've cut these two boards down to size height wise anyway and now we need to cut them to length and width. So we need four different pieces for each side of our rectangle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the width here. We're gonna cut two pieces to this width, and then we're going to measure the length here. And we are going to not cut it to that same length because we need it to fit only the side. If I cut this length and this length and then put them together, it would be too big. So what we're gonna do is we need to cut these ones and then cut two pieces that are the length of this minus the width of these two boards. That was probably confusing, but I'll show you what I mean. All right, so our width came out to be eight and one eighth here. So we're gonna go make ourselves a mark right there on that line. Now, sometimes people make a mark like this, but you don't know where that's gonna be. So you gotta make a vertical mark that's parallel with your measuring tape. Okay, now we're gonna measure our length here. Now, once we measure the length, and I can't do this while holding the camera at the same time, so I'm gonna pretend that I'm measuring it properly. So I measure the length and let's say it's 24 and an eighth of an inch there. Now, if I cut my board here to 24 and an eighth of an inch, and yes, I have a messy workplace, an OSHA violation waiting to happen. Um, actually, it is an OSHA violation. Accident waiting to happen is probably what I should have said. Now, I have these two boards here. We're going to minus the width of these two boards. Sorry for the shoddy camera work. So, pushing these together, we're going to measure these together, which is, if I can see it properly, a one and so it's not quite a fourth. It is five sixteenths. So, one and five sixteenths. So, whatever our measurement was, so 24 and a eighth, we're going to measure one and five sixteenths from that. All right, so that measurement came out to be 22 for me, 22 and 13 sixteenths. Very precise. So 22 and then 13 sixteenths. So, sorry, I'm trying to look at this on the camera and it is not helping me at all. All right, so a half would be eight sixteenths. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, right there. That's our mark. And we need two of those boards. Okay, I haven't fixed anything yet to anything, but I just kind of put these boards together and then I want to see if this thing is actually going to be able to fit inside if all of that was vacant space. All right, now I put it on the edge there and you can see that I've got a tiny little, well, almost you can see, I've got a tiny little bit of space on this side um, and a tiny little bit of space on that side, but I am not comfortable with how much space it has. So I'm gonna recut that and add some space just so I have a little bit of wiggle room and not maybe constant contact with that. Okay, I cut another piece and I wasn't quite happy with how far it was. So I've actually put in these little extension pieces just to give me a little bit more wiggle room. And then I've kind of pushed it out to the outside. All right, now I'm going to be filling the table here, this form with more concrete than this height is here. So I'm going to need to be able to make this whole space a void in the table. So how I'm going to do that is I'm now going to put a board and I'm going to secure a board on top of this. Okay, now I'm gonna be putting all of this together. I didn't have a board big enough and I hate using new stuff, so I always try to use scrap when I can. But I cut these two boards to the size and now I'm gonna secure it with a nail slash bradder, brad nailer. Um, so what I have is an 18 gauge brad nail. So it accommodates a specific width here. Um, I think this one's like I don't know, two and a fourth or something like that. It's not a very big one. It's not a very powerful one. It is battery powered and it doesn't have to be attached to a, a tank, which I like, but that also means that it takes a while to reload because it's got to put pump of air to actually push your nail into it. But it works for really small jobs like I do all the time. 
All right, now I've got it all set up, but I don't know if this part is really important, but I'm going to actually caulk it just in case something leaks through and then I have some problems with cement where I don't want it being. So I just got this caulking gun. I just bought this uh, caulk here. And then actually, I don't know if you know, but right here, this cuts open the caulking gun. So you can actually cut it open there. And then also a lot of these have a hole that you need to puncture with a nail. Your caulking gun also has that right here. So you can turn that around and actually, not your caulking gun, in your caulk. Now I'd show you that part, but it's really impossible to do that while I'm holding a camera. I don't have a camera mount. All right, so I'm just pumping this here to get it to ooze out of my tip. Boop. All right, and then I'm just going to go ahead and lay a thin bead here all along these four sides. All right, now on the edge, I made sure that there was no kind of overlap. This is upside down, by the way, um, because if there's any overlap, there's going to be cement that settles here and then wood that's stuck in the cement. So actually in places where it maybe was curved a little bit, because maybe this wood's not as straight as the line I cut, I kind of pulled it out and it's okay if I have a little edge here. I'm not worried about that because it's going to be inside the table and then we'll ever see it. But I definitely don't want this wood piece stuck in my table under something that's going to be on fire at any time. So I have that glued down and while it's waiting and sitting before I flip it over and then use the brad nailer on it, I am going to put in some internal supports. These boards might not be strong enough and they might bend a little bit with the concrete. In case you're not aware, cement, I should say cement, I think I bought cement. Cement actually heats a little bit and expands a little bit when it is curing. And so I don't want it to kind of prop this up and then have this part be smaller than the end part. So I'm going to put some sort of pieces in that are going to be able to brace that just in case. All right, now cut and put in some braces. I have glued them into place and I didn't quite make them all equidistant. Now I did that because I'm going to want to eventually, once we get this all uh, secured, flip this over and I'm going to want to drill a hole in the center for that uh, fitting to go through to the device. So now I'm just going to secure each one of these by hitting it with the brad nailer and get those kind of in position. Now I can't quite get this perfect, uh, so I'm going to adjust it and make it square as I can on one side of it and the other side's going to hang over a little bit and then I'll just cut that off and trim it to be perfect on the saw. All right, that's as square as I'm going to be able to get it. And I'm going to go ahead and just nail it down and secure it around all four edges. All right, now I've got it all trimmed down to sides. So when the cement, you can't see here, when the cement gets filled into the side here, it's not going to fill in a gap and then make the wood get stuck and I can't get it back out. All right, here we go. All right, this is a little hard to see, but I have the board here that I'm going to use for my form. I've put a bead of silicone caulking here that is on that line that I made earlier. That is the shape of this. I'm going to go ahead and put it down and then secure it with the brad nailer. All right, there we go. Secure it from underneath. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over. Now this shouldn't be a problem, but I am going to run a bead of caulking all around my edges just to make sure nothing seeps through and then I don't have to chip anything off later. The cement is so thick that it's not really important to do that, but I'm going to do it just as a precaution. Now I'm going to make a few holes in this for one, for this to be able to get through. So I am going to use this one inch PVC pipe and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to get it out of the hole because it's one inch hole is, is perfect for this, but the inside of the PVC pipe is not going to be fitting. So I'm going to go ahead and insert one in the center for this thing to come through. And then I'm also going to put in just a couple for air vents, just so that I have a little bit of air coming through the bottom of the table. All right, I've got the hole marked exactly where the threads from the pan contact the actual surface here. And we're going to, using a hole saw attached to my drill here, uh, we're going to use this to make a hole in here. And I'm actually going to put one, two, and three, I think, holes. Maybe I'm going to do four. I think I'm going to do three. All right, I've got the three pipes in. Now I'm going to caulk around the bases. Now it would have been nicer if I had a hole saw that was tighter. And so this would be more snug fit. And so I just barely had to caulk those. But here's the thing. I don't want to spend any more money on this than I have to. So I'm going with whatever I've got on hand. All right, I put a... Now before I say this, I don't need any jokes in the comments and you're going to know why in just a second but i got some pretty thick caulk around here now some of you professionals could have done a much better job than i did i just slapped it on here <clears throat> so because this is so thick i'm gonna let this sit a whole hour before i come out and start messing with this again and moving things around so i'm gonna let this sit for an hour and then we're gonna do the easy part this is not gonna take much thinking at all and put on the edges to our form yippee yay all right so while i am waiting i needed to cut a hole in this metal table so i actually got my i actually forgot the name of this off uh skill saw maybe 
I don't know. I totally forgot. Uh, reciprocated saw. I don't know. This thing with a metal saw on it, and I was able to get in there and cut myself a hole for that um, hardware to go through. All right. So while this sits. And while I've got the table done, I'm gonna go make dinner for my family. I've got my forms ready to go, but I have this really smooth board here on purpose to get a smooth texture on top of the cement. But then I've got these sides that um, are these wood boards. Now the cement is going to pick up every single texture that it comes in contact with. So if I got texture there, I'm going to have texture on my cement. And although that might give it a nice rustic look, I am not too keen on that look with what I'm going for today. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cover all of it with tin foil. All right, looks like I'm making something for a science fair or some kind of national secret thing. But here we go. It's as straight as I can get it. It got pretty smooth and straight on that side. A few wrinkles over here, but we're just going to have to do what we can do. Next up is I am going to secure uh, the ends with screws. And then once I do that, I'll go on to the next step. got those secured. Now these sharp edges, these are going to be the top of the table. Remember this is upside down and I am not too fond of sharp edges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bead of caulking and we're going to smooth that out so that when the cement is poured, it'll actually follow that edge and give a nice rounded edge. All right. So I poured the concrete, I put the table down in its spot and then I poured the concrete around the edges of the table to let it have like a little inset. And now I'm going to wait till the concrete sets a little bit, pull those pipes out while it's still wet so I can get them out and then we are going to install everything else if everything goes well tomorrow. All right, now last night while it was curing, I came out, checked the stiffness of the concrete and then twisted these out. I wanted to make sure they actually came out because I don't want plastic under a heat uh, location. So I just basically turned them and turned them until I twisted them out, which was kind of funny because then the uh, caulking actually was not quite set and it the caulking is now on these holes as well. So it kind of surrounded those holes with caulking. So it was kind of interesting, but um, it's pretty solid. It's pretty messy under the table. I hope it's not going to be terrible. And I tried to make sure I wasn't going to get a lip here, but I guarantee I got a, a small under lip. It's kind of sharp. People put their hands or legs under the table for any reason, or like, you know, your knee, you won't put your legs under the table. Um, but it is time to flip this thing around. I thought that I was going to have such a thin film of concrete on the table that I would be able to pop this out and that this would just be set in form, but I think it is solid in there and we have one piece. Um, a table and tabletop now together forever. All right, so let's go ahead and undo this thing and check it out. Okay. Not a terrible side, not what I was looking for, but not terrible. Let me make sure we're focused here. All right, now this side I'm a little uncomfortable of what it might look like because I put in the first pour of the concrete into this section. And I've actually been saying cement, concrete, cement, concrete. I actually looks like I bought uh, concrete. I meant to buy cement so it would be smoother and we wouldn't have rock pieces in it. But apparently I need to be able to focus on the store and learn to read. Um, so it was partially set by the time I went to pour it. So it was very hard to get out, very hard to pour. So I'm uncomfortable. This is gonna have a lot of air pockets in it and not look very good. I tried to fix it, um, but we're gonna see how bad it is. Okay, got some air pockets. Maybe it's gonna, it, it looks mostly like the rest of it though. It's not too bad. I'm gonna go ahead and get some of this stuff off and then we're gonna look at it. Okay, so we've got a fair amount of air pockets on this side. I'm actually not disliking them too much. It is getting a little bit of a character to it and I'm growing, it's growing on me a little bit. I was looking for a nice flat sheen, but I probably should have used cement if that's what I wanted. Anywho, I do like how the caulking has left a really good beveled edge on this. I don't know if you can see it on the film here, but it looks great. But what I am kind of finding interesting is my whiteboard. It's not just the lighting here. It's turned kind of a lime green. So here, let me zoom in here. And it's not as green on the camera as it is in real life, but I'm wondering if that tainted the color of my, my tabletop. So I'm going to go ahead and pry off the rest of the aluminum foil around the edges of the table, flip it over and see what it looks like. All right. I got it up on its side. Got, I think all of the aluminum foil off the side here. 
most of it. Um, let's go ahead and reveal. Let's see it together. See if I can do it with one-handed. See if it turned green. I don't know if I can do it one-handed. Maybe if I put my foot on the table. Okay. Maybe not. Okay, looking good. I'm gonna have to pause and do. All right, this is looking good. I'm rocking the table here. This is what I was looking for. This is the texture I was looking for on the top table. So I'm extraordinarily happy with the top. I got a little places where the board kind of destroyed itself and it's stuck to the table. Hopefully I can just wash that off or sand it off one of the two, but now I'm kind of disappointed how the side turned out because the side is nothing like the top. Probably should use the same kind of board on the sides. Okay, this is so smooth. It feels like polished granite. It's reflective, like, oh, this turned out super, super good. I am very pleased with the top. So right here is a good thing. I didn't use screws, because this would be nearly impossible to get out with screws. Using the tiny little, uh, I actually had brads. I actually might have used nails. I'm not sure which one I actually purchased. Um, but they're really thin and easy to remove. Right, I'm gonna go ahead and do that to all four sides and then get out any kind of putty residue that is left. The caulking, I mean. Now, I'm not sure how to get this wood piece out, so I'm just gonna try to break it, manhandle it out. We'll see. I'm trying to try to break into this under this piece. So, uh, good thing I used a really thin piece of wood here, or that would not have worked <laughs> so easily. I think this is probably like, I don't know, I guess a quarter and eighth of an inch thick. Sort of something ridiculous, like some 30 seconds thick. All right, doing that same procedure here, I actually broke through the cement on the other side. Should be okay though, because this does sit on the back table. Um, here, so you can see it kind of broke down that a little too far, but let's keep going. So hammering this is becoming a little too violent. It is breaking, cracking this. It is only like, I think it's half an inch in some places, maybe an inch and a half, or, or sorry, an inch in some places. So I'm just going through and I'm with physical force, wiggling back and forth and cracking the wood off. All right, for the most part, a lot of it is on the skids. This part worked out really well, kind of put the chisel right through that, my bad. And uh, here, put the chisel right through that one as well. And this one, I actually put it through with my hand, so that one must have had a lot of air pockets behind it, probably, because I used some, nope, concrete, there we go. Concrete and some cement. All right, so let's get this last piece out, and then get the rest of the coffee. Okay, I just went to get the pan, um, but what I think is funny is it looks like a really, really nice base to a headstone right now. All right, moment of truth, will it fit? Oh, oh. I have some swear words to say, but I'm saying them in my head instead. Okay, here it is on the deck. Now I just need to figure out how to hook up all the equipment based on the instructions from the manufacturer and get the wires through the table. Now, some other day or time, I'm gonna figure out a box down there that can hide and house a propane tank, but for today, we're just gonna install. the directions it looks like that is just going to go in this hole right here okay that was actually really hard to get in because of the fact that this is already installed back here so this was kind of in the way so i might put the igniter button in first before you install that section instructions are to put these two wires into the back of the starter here. The smaller one goes here, the thicker one goes here. Now on mine, it already came on my kit installed up here. The instructions do show the instructions for installing this, but mine is already put together for me. 
Okay, so the next instructions are basically, okay, now you have that tank that hooked up, um, then you just hook it up to the propane tank and you're done. Um, which I think is a little laughable because there are no instructions on how to put this stuff together. But um, it did come with a coupling, threaded coupling, it came with this, and all of this is already put together. And so it's kind of self-explanatory. And then it also came with this tape. Um, so I'm assuming this tape goes on the threads and then we just put it together. Okay, I think I'm going clockwise on this, it's upside down, so my brain can't figure that out. But you should wrap this with the direction that you're going to actually do the threads. Now this helps seal any gaps that you're gonna have between your threads and your connection. I'm gonna do that same threading to this here, so righty tighty. So that's gonna thread this way. Add the coupling. I just admire the craftsmanship of this coupling right here. This thing is gorgeous. Oh, and that sound, that's gorgeous. Just gorgeous. All right, we're gonna tighten that on, hand tighten it as tight as we can, and let's go ahead and put it on the bottom of our table. We're gonna thread it through the middle hole of my table, and I'm gonna attempt to do this on camera. Bring it up through the center. All right, I was just checking to make sure all of these were really tight on and that we didn't have any loose bits, especially from jiggling around, and I actually did. So I fixed that, and now it's time to put it in the table. All right, let's go ahead and put it in the table. See if my phone stays steady long enough. See if we can get this on. Just kidding, I forgot the battery. I'll be right back. Let's turn our gas on. Night. Okay, it's taking a bit. we go okay I don't know maybe it was a hard time starting the first time around all right and we have flame Ooh, some good heat well I ran down to the store and maybe just because it's the end of the season but there was one bag of blue and one bag of brown so I'm hoping one bag is gonna do it and I went for the blue instead of the brown and no they didn't have any like pumice like stone or anything like that so this is what we're going with one of the things All right, that's it. So this costs about $200 to build this table, and that was because I had an existing table I could put it on, but legs probably wouldn't cost that much if you wanted to add legs to it. Um, $230 if you're gonna count also the glass that I put in the top. Now, the ones you buy at the store don't come with glass, and that's why I've excluded that cost to kind of be comparable how much it would cost to make it compared to how much it would cost to buy it. All right, if you have questions, ask them down in the comments.